Okay, hello everybody and welcome to our River City Yarns video on how to knit. Uh, before we get started, I'm just going to give you an overview of the tools that you need in order to learn how to knit. It's actually quite simple. The main thing that you're going to need is a set of knitting needles and some yarn. Uh, we recommend that you use 100% wool. Um, that's what our Epic Yarn is. We recommend that because when you begin to learn how to knit, uh, when you're a beginner knitter, you have a tendency to be tight. And so the nice thing about using 100% wool is that it will um, stretch and have a little more elasticity in your hands than something that is uh, purely synthetic. The other thing we recommend are bamboo knitting needles. We like to use uh, wooden knitting needles in our beginner classes because they're not as slippery, <clears throat> excuse me, and they're very light and warm in your hands. Um, that said, you can use any kind of knitting needle, including a circular needle, to learn how to knit. So if you're looking for supplies, we recommend 100% wool and wooden knitting needles to begin with. Um, a couple of other tools that you might find handy to have when you are learning how to knit is a small pair of scissors to cut your yarn with, a wool needle, I'll move the yarn here for a second, a wool needle is a needle that has a um, big eye in it so that it's easy to thread wool onto it and it has a rather blunt end so that you're not actually poking your skin when you um, when you use it and you use this to weave in the ends of your work when you're done. These are put them here a couple of locking stitch markers. They are easy to lock and unlock and I'll show you what we use them for in the rest of this video. And then finally, never hurts to have a tape measure. This is a retractable tape measure, but you can also use a ruler or um, any other type of tape measure to measure your work. That'll come up as more important later. All right, let's get started. So I'm using a worsted weight yarn. This is a yarn that is a medium weight. On the ball band of your yarn, you might find a gauge indicator, and mine says that you should get about 18 stitches over four inches. This box is a standard four inches across by four inches high, or for those of you on the metric system, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So my yarn has a gauge of 18 stitches over 10 centimeters using 4.5 millimeter knitting needles. Um, so that's, that's the gauge. And that puts this yarn into a category that is known as worsted or in American, the American numbering system would be a number four. I'm also using five millimeter knitting needles. These ones are about 10 inches long, so they're nice and short for my beginner knitting project. And um, they also match the weight of the yarn. So four and a half to five millimeter needles uh, and a worsted weight yarn is a good place to start. Now, um, I'm taking off the ball band of my yarn because I want to show you that um, inside this ball, there, there are two ends to this yarn. And right here, we'll find one end that's tucked inside, and it's the outside of the ball. So inside this ball, deep inside, there's another end that will be for the inside. And you can stick your fingers in there and try and find it. But I often find that it's tricky to find, and so I just leave it in there, especially when you're beginning. Just pull a little bit of yarn off the outside of your ball, and you'll be just fine. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start with in knitting is a slip knot. To make a slip knot, we're going to start with uh, about Give yourself about eight to 10 inches from the end of the yarn. And uh, the easiest way to do this is to wrap the yarn around your finger. But if you find that's tricky, wrap it around three fingers. 
Um, so sometimes it's easiest just to start with quite a few fingers with a big slip knot, I guess is what I'm trying to say, and then work your way down to a small one. So let's wrap the yarn around three fingers like this. Now you may notice in my hand that one yarn is going over top of the other yarn. So I'm crossing it over. I want to take that yarn that's on top and pull it through this loop right here. So I'm going to tuck that top yarn into my loop that's on my fingers and then I'm going to pull that yarn through and take the loop off my fingers at the same time. I'll grab onto both of those strands and just pull that loop tight. So this creates a slip knot that you can adjust on your knitting needles or if you need to do it again you can pull it right out. Let's do that again. So you wrap the yarn around three fingers like this. Give yourself a pretty good tail there. And then tuck that top yarn inside your loop. Pull that little bit of yarn plus the loop off your fingers. Use your fingers to grab both ends of the loop and of the, of the yarn and pull that loop tight. You can fit this onto your knitting needle now or practice it one more time. To undo the loop, you just pull on both ends of the yarn and it's gone. So if you were going to do that on one finger, you would just wrap the yarn around your finger, tuck the top yarn into the loop on your finger, pull that loop off your finger and snug it up. Then you can place the slip knot on your knitting needle and just snug it up so that it's not choking the needle. You don't want it to be too tight, but it's not too, it's not too tight and it, there's, no, there's not a lot of air underneath it either. So just, uh, it should be able to move fairly freely on your needle without squeaking. So the next step in knitting is to cast on. There are several ways to cast on, but I'm going to show you an easy method to begin with. It's called an e-loop cast on. Uh, I'm doing this with, uh, because I'm right-handed, I'm holding the knitting needle with my slip knot in my left hand, and I'm holding the yarn in my right hand. But you can do this in a, you can do this opposite if you're left-handed. You can hold the knitting needle in your right hand and the yarn in your left. Let's start with the right-handed maneuver. Okay, so the knitting needle's in my left hand and I'm holding the slip knot in place by just putting my thumb or my finger behind it. And my right hand is holding the yarn and my thumb is poised upwards like this, like I'm giving you a, an okay sign. You take your thumb and you go over the yarn like this, just so that it's almost wrapped completely around your finger. And then you take your knitting needle, which is in your left hand, slide it under the yarn, slip your thumb out of the loop, and again, snug it up just gently. Don't want it to be too loose or too tight. So again, the stitches should move fairly easily on your needle. Let's do that again. I'm holding those stitches in place with my left hand by just holding my finger behind them. And with my right hand, I've got the yarn in my fingers and I take my thumb and go over the yarn to wrap it around, stick my knitting needle into the loop that's on my thumb, pull my thumb out of the loop and snug it up gently. This is called an e-loop cast on and it's not a very stable cast on, but it's a really easy one to begin with. So yarn in your fingers, thumb goes over the yarn, wrap it around like this, take the needle that's in your left hand and slide it under the, th the loop on your thumb, pull your thumb out and snug it up. Again, thumb over the yarn, needle goes into the thumb, the, the loop on your thumb from the bottom up, Thumb comes out, snug it up. Wrap your thumb over the yarn, needle goes under the loop, thumb comes out, snug it up. Over, under, out, snug. Over, under, out, snug. Let's cast on about 10 stitches this way just to get started. Two, four, six, eight, 
9, and 10. Now that you've got your stitches cast on your needle, you can begin to knit. In order to knit, we need to have two needles. I'm holding the, the needle that has the stitches that we cast on in my left hand, and I'm holding the empty knitting needle in my right hand. I'm going to now insert the, the empty needle, knitting needle, the, the needle that's in my right hand. You will insert into the first stitch on the needle uh, on the needle on your left hand. You insert that needle like you're crossing skis on a ski hill. The needle goes into the base of the stitch, so it's going uh, under at the bottom of the stitch, it's going through from the right to the left, and your needles are pointed across from each other like this. The knitting needle that you're knitting onto is below the one that's holding the stitches. Then with your left hand, just hold those two needles briefly, and with your right hand, you can wrap the yarn around the needle. Let me show you that again. So the yarn is in the back here. I'm going to take it and wrap it around the bottom needle in a um, in a in what I think of as a counterclockwise direction. You just snug that yarn up and hold it down with your finger here while you gently um, encourage that yarn to come through the base of the stitch at the bottom of the one that you just made. Once you've got that loop on your right hand needle, you can take the other loop that you worked into off your left hand needle. Let's do that again. So the tip of your right hand needle goes into the bottom of the stitch on your left hand needle and you put your needle in as if you're crossing skis. Then gently hold it with your left hand while you wrap the yarn around with your right hand, holding the yarn down uh, with your right hand finger, pull the yarn through the bottom of the stitch, just encourage it to come through until that, that yarn over that you made is through at the, at the front, then you can take this stitch off the back needle. One more time, insert your needle with the, your right hand needle into the bottom of the stitch on the left hand needle. Hold the needles together with your left hand and with your right hand, wrap the yarn around in a counterclockwise direction on the bottom needle only. Then holding the yarn down so it doesn't get too loose, pull the yarn through the base of the stitch on your left hand needle, and then take that stitch off your left hand needle. When you're doing this, try not to pull too tightly on the yarn between your needles because that will make the stitches on your left hand needle really tight. So just hold them together like this, insert your knitting needle, wrap the yarn around on the bottom, pull that yarn over through the base of your stitch, and then take the stitch off the left hand needle and you've now knit it onto your right hand needle. Again, insert your right hand needle, wrap the yarn around in a counterclockwise direction. Using your right hand needle tip, pull that loop through the base of the stitch on your left hand needle, and then the stitch on your left hand needle comes off. Insert your right hand needle, wrap the yarn around the right hand needle, which is on the bottom. Pull that yarn through the base of the stitch on your left hand needle. Take the stitch off your left hand needle. Insert, wrap, pull through, off. 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 So what you've done now is successfully knitted all the stitches that you cast on onto your right hand needle and you've emptied the left hand needle. To do the next row you simply change hands. So the needle that has all the stitches on it goes into your left hand and the empty needle goes into your right hand. Here we have 
still 10 stitches, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Each stitch has a slight little bump on the bottom of it, and your yarn is um, facing you. Uh, you need your working yarn to be close to the tip of the needle, and your empty needle is in your right hand. The uh, way to hold your knitting is kind of like the way you would hold a knife if you were going to cut. So you can just put your hand right over your yarn and your knitting, and then your other hand you can hold the other knitting needle again as if you were going to cut, uh, cut your meat with a knife. <laughs> That's the best way I can think of to explain it. And we're going to just knit again. So I take the tip of the right hand needle insert it into the first stitch on the left hand needle, wrap the yarn around the bait, the bottom needle, gently encourage the yarn to come through the, the base of the stitch on the left hand needle and take that stitch off. Let's do it again. Insert, wrap, pull through, off. Insert, wrap, pull through, off. Insert, wrap, pull through, off. This is knitting, off. Insert, wrap, pull through, off. Insert, wrap, pull through, off. As you knit across the row, you'll see that the fabric that you create grows. It will become longer and hang under your needle. And at the end of each row, you can kind of give it a little tug just to pull everything in place. So again, once you've knit across the row and all the stitches are now in the needle that's on your right hand, you will put the needle in your right hand into your left hand and put the empty needle into your right hand. The needle that you are knitting from we'll call the left hand needle and the needle that you're knitting to we'll call the right hand needle. So now what you would like to do is just continue to practice going back and forth doing the knit stitch. Again to get started your yarn needs to be hanging out close to the pointy end of your left hand needle. That needle needs to be in your left hand and you can put your hand directly over your knitting work. Your stitches need to be close to the tapered end of the needle, so make sure they're pushed up there, but you can hold on to them to make sure they don't fall off. The empty needle goes in your right hand, and you insert the needle, wrap the yarn around the bottom needle, pull the yarn through the base of the stitch on your left hand needle, and then take that stitch off your left hand needle. Practice this for a little bit, and you'll end up with a fabric uh, stitch pattern that we call the garter stitch pattern. All right, you practice and I'll come back and in the next section we'll talk about the next knitting stitch, the next stitch in knitting which is called the purl stitch. So I've been working back and forth on my 10 stitches just using the knit stitch and you can see that, and I've created a little square. How do I know it's a square? Well, I could measure it or I can just take this corner and fold it up to the opposite corner and when those two corners meet and there's no overlap here, you've got a square. Uh, so here's my square of uh, all knit stitches and this pattern you can so you can see is the same has the same look on both sides of the fabric that you're creating. So this stitch we've created by knitting on um, each time you turn your needles, we call that um, west side. So this side is the same as this side, and we create this stitch by knitting on both sides of the, um, of the piece. And now we'll change and add in another, um, the other stitch that is required to knit. There are only two stitches that are involved. One is the knit stitch, and the other is the purl stitch. So we're going to try the purl stitch next. With your, <clears throat> with your fabric on your left hand, in your left hand, on the left hand needle, and your empty needle on in your right hand, um, to execute the purl stitch, 
Um, one thing that's helpful to remember is that everything is the opposite of the knit stitch. So remember when we did the knit stitch, we inserted the needle from the front to the back and crossed the um, needles this way. So to do the purl stitch, we do the opposite. You're going to insert your needle from the back to the front. And so finding where that is sometimes can be a little tricky. You can tilt your needle forward like this so you see the loop going over it. You want to stick your needle under the front leg or the leg of the stitch that's facing you. And um, again, cross your legs or cross the needles like they're skis. This time though, we want the yarn to be in the front of your work. So if you inserted your needle and the yarn is in the back, just bring it to the front like this. We're going to wrap the yarn around the front needle. So the right hand needle is in the front. We're going to wrap it around again in a counterclockwise direction or from the right to the left. I'm going to hold it down with my thumb while I gently persuade that yarn to go out the back of the stitch and then we'll let that left hand stitch come off the needle. So again, the right hand needle goes into the stitch um, from the back to the front of the, of the first leg that's facing you on the left hand needle. Hold those needles in your left hand, uh, just pinch them together. Use your right hand to wrap the yarn around the front needle, the right hand needle, in a counterclockwise or right to left direction and then push that yarn over out through the back of the stitch under in the bottom there and then you can pull the stitch off the left hand needle. So again it's insert this time back to front, wrap in the front, push out the back, pop the stitch off the left hand needle insert back to front, wrap counterclockwise, push through the back of the work, pop it off the left hand needle. Insert, wrap, push, off. 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 Now I know I make that look really easy. Don't be discouraged if it's not happening as quickly for you as it does for me. I've had lots and lots of practice, but the other thing that makes it easier for me and sometimes what I see people not doing in the beginning is having all the stitches up close to the end of the needle. I know this might make you a little bit concerned that they're going to fall off the needle, but um, if you try to knit or purl with your stitches way down on the needle, then it's it, it just stretches the yarn and it makes it very difficult to get those stitches off the tip. So we're finished this row. Make sure your stitches are close to the tapered end of your needle. Turn your work around. And we've done a row of purl stitches. So we can do another row of purl stitches and that will give us fabric very similar to what's down below. So I'm going to propose instead that when you turn, after you do your row of purl stitches, when you turn and you have the fabric facing you again and you can see that the stitches underneath the needle are um, smooth and not bumpy, then on this side we're going to knit. Another, um, another way to remember that, to, to knit on this side and to purl on this side, is that after you've done your first row of purling and you've just turned your work and you're about to do the second row, take one of those locking stitch markers and just lock it to the fabric on this side of your work. And that way you will have a marker on one side of your work and that can remind you that on this side we're going to knit and on the side without the marker we're going to purl. So let's just go back and do one row of knitting. 
This time you're inserting the needle from the front to the back. Your legs are crossed. The yarn is in the back. You wrap your yarn around the needle and you pull that yarn over through to the front and then this stitch comes off the needle. So insert front to back, wrap, pull off. Insert, wrap, pull off. Let's continue to do that to the end of the row. When you get to the end of the row, you'll see that your pattern has changed somewhat. Uh, we've got a different kind of look happening under the needles. That's good. I'll get back to that in a second. When you get to the end of the row, you turn your work so that the needle that was in your um, right hand is now in your left hand. Take the needle out of your left hand and put it in your right hand. Make sure that the yarn is um, close to the tip of your needle and ignore that little loose stitch at the end. Just pull your yarn down and now we're going to purl again. So to purl you need to insert your needle from the back to the front. You see how this yarn is just kind of flopping in the way? I'm just going to push it down with my thumb so that I can only focus on the stitch that's on the needle. This piece of yarn here is not on the needle so don't pay any attention to it. Insert your needle from the back to the front so that your needles are crossed over. Find your yarn and make sure it's in the front. Wrap it around the right hand needle. Push that wrap through to the back side of your work and then take the stitch that you just purled off your left hand needle. Insert the right hand needle from the back to the front. Wrap the yarn around the right hand needle from the right to the left. Push that wrap through to the back of your work and then take the stitch off the left hand needle. Insert, wrap, push, off. Insert, wrap, push, off. Insert, wrap, push, off. And so on to the end of the row. So we're purling the stitches on the side of the work that doesn't have the marker on it or on what sometimes I refer to as the bumpy side because it's all bumpy. And then when you turn it around and you have what I sometimes refer to as the smooth side facing you, on that side you will knit. Again, the marker, the locking stitch marker, um, helps to remember which side is a knit side and which side is a purl side. I'm going to continue to do that. I just need a little bit more yarn off my ball here. I'm going to continue to do that until we have a square again of about the same size as the garter stitch square uh, down below. So working one side knitting and the other side purling will work until we have about the same amount of fabric. And this stitch we're doing now is called the stocking stitch or the stockinette stitch. So on the smooth side I knit, the side with the marker I knit, and again in the knit stitch your needle is in, your right hand needle goes from the front to the back and the yarn is wrapped around in the back. until you knit the very last stitch and then you're going to turn your work put your right hand needle into your put the needle that you just finished the empty needle into your right hand the needle with your knitting on it put into your left hand um, having the yarn facing you this time and no marker 
means we're going to purl. Ignore that little bump that's down there because it's not on the needle and focus just on the stitch that's on your needle. Put your um, empty needle in from the back to the front, crossing your needles over. Find the yarn, make sure it's in the front. Wrap the yarn around in the front and push that stitch through to the back and then take that stitch off the needle. So insert, wrap, push, off. Insert back to front, wrap the yarn around in the front, push that wrap through to the back of your work, take it off your left hand needle. The purl stitch again is just the opposite of the knit stitch. So it's kind of like doing the knit stitch backwards. And the reason why we need it is because we're going to use the knit and the purl stitches to create um, a whole bunch of stitch patterns. It's kind of amazing how many patterns you can make with just those two stitches. So again, here we have uh, just a sample of the two stitches we're making. This was garter stitch where we were knitting on both sides of the work. And garter stitch looks the same on both sides of the work. And here is stockinette stitch where um, you are knitting on the smooth side. And when the, when the bumpy side is facing you, you're going to purl on there. Um, it can only be facing, which side is facing you depends on where the yarn is. So again, the yarn needs to be close to the uh, pointy part of the needle. That needle that you're knitting from needs to be in your left hand. And the empty needle or the needle that you're knitting to needs to be in your right hand. So this is the only way it can face me and I am able to work it because the yarn needs to be here. Um, and so when this is the case, we say that this is the side that's facing you. It's the side that's about to be worked. So this is a knit side and I'm going to knit the stitches across. I'm at the end of my row, turn my work around. And again, the yarn needs to be close to the pointy end of the needle. But this time, the fabric that is facing me has the bumpy side to it. And so this is the purl side. Ignore that little bit of yarn that always sticks out at the beginning here. Make sure you just focus on the first stitch on the left hand needle. Insert your needle, wrap the yarn around, push it through to the back and off. And again, this stitch that we're creating is called stockinette stitch or stocking stitch. And it has um, the characteristics in that it's not the same on both sides like the garter stitch was. It has a smooth side and it has a bumpy side and you will knit on the smooth side and purl on the bumpy side. Okay, all right, keep working that pattern and we'll come back when, you're, um, when this stitch is also a square and matches this one below. All right, so here I've done some stocking stitch on top of my garter stitch. And now I'm just gonna see if I have a square. So I've taken out my tape measure and I can see that I have, um, it's hard to it's harder to measure stockinette stitch because it wants to curl up so much on the side. But just, just to make sure I'm around the right size for a square, I've got about um, five and a half, maybe five and a quarter centimeters in um, my width and here I've got about the same five um, about five maybe I'm a little bit shy on the height. But I'm going to stop here with my stockinette stitch and talk to you about doing a combination of knits and purls across the same row. This creates um, even more um, knitting patterns for you. So let's take a look at what you need to do to alternate between knitting and purling on the same row. Um, I'm going to start my pattern by doing two knits and then two purls and then two knits and then two purls and then two knits across the row. So uh, here we go. In 
doing a knit, you remember that you insert your needle from the front to the back, you wrap the yarn around in the back, and you pull the yarn through to the front. So I'm going to do that once, and then again a second time, twice. And now I want to purl. So this part's very important. Pay attention here. In, remember that when we purl, the yarn needs to be in the front, but currently it's in the back. And so the proper way to bring your yarn to the front is to bring it in between the needle tips. Now I'm going to show you the wrong way. I uh, don't want you to repeat this, but I just want you to know what will happen if you um, don't do it the recommended way. You could bring the yarn just over your needle and go to purl, but you'll see here that when I purl my next stitch, I have this wrap left over top of my needle, and this is going to increase the number of stitches on my needle and create a hole. So when you've been knitting, and you want to now switch to purling, bring the yarn forward, but bring it in between the needles. And that way no yarn goes over the top of the needle and creates an additional stitch. Now with my yarn in front, I insert my needle from the back to the front in that front leg like this, wrap the yarn around in the front, push the stitch through the back and take it off my left hand needle. So insert, wrap in the front, push the wrap to the back, take that stitch off the needle. I've done two knits and now I've done two purls and I'm going to take the yarn to the back so that my pattern can go back to knitting. So again, take the yarn between the needles so that it doesn't wrap over the needle, insert your needle into the stitch from the front to the back, wrap it in the back, pull the wrap through and off the needle, insert, wrap, pull off. Okay, and now I'm going to purl again. So I bring the yarn between the two needles. I'm going to purl the next two stitches. Then take the yarn to the back between the needle tips and knit the last two stitches. Okay, so if you look closely at your work now, you may notice that where you purled, you can see two bumps or a bump beneath each stitch that was purled. The stitches that were knitted don't have those bumps under them. So here's my two knit stitches, my two purl stitches, two knit stitches, two purl stitches, two knit stitches. You see those bumps there? Those bumps I I feel are the easiest thing to see and they point out that those stitches have been purled. Now I'm going to turn my work around so that I can work on the other side and here I want you to see that again we have those bumps but they're in the opposite location so I have bump bump um, we sometimes refer to the knit stitch as a V stitch so underneath the needle I see a little V of yarn and then bump, bump, V, V, bump, bump. So on this side of the work, I'm going to purl the bumps and knit the Vs. If you have 10 stitches like I do, this means that you will purl, purl, knit, knit, purl, purl, knit, knit, purl, purl. Let's give that a try. When you're purling, the yarn is in the front and you insert your needle from the back to the front under the first leg of the stitch, wrap your yarn around in the front, push it through to the back and off, wrap, push. Those are my two purl stitches. I take the yarn to the back and I work the two knit stitches. One, two. Then bring the yarn to the front in between the two needle tips and purl Purl, take the yarn to the back and knit, knit, bring the yarn to the front in between the needle tips and purl, purl. Okay, turn your work. Look carefully at your work. You should again see that we have V stitches for knits and bumpy purl stitches for purls.
Sometimes I just look for the purl stitches and then I know that the stitches on either side of it are knit. So on this side we again have knit, knit, purl, purl, knit, knit, purl, purl, knit, knit. This is called reading your stitches and in some patterns or uh, video instructions they'll say to you knit the knits and purl the purls. So is this a knit stitch? Yes, it has a V underneath it. So I'm going to knit it. And this is a purl stitch because it has that telltale bump right under the needle. So bring the yarn forward between the needles, purl that stitch, purl the next stitch. Take the yarn back between the needles and knit the knits. Bring the yarn forward and purl the purls. Take the yarn to the back and knit the knits. And again, you're going to see a new and different pattern emerge. Okay, everybody, uh, remember when you turn your work, the, the stitches with the bumps on them are purled. The stitches with the little V's under them are knit. Go ahead and continue to work in this pattern and I'll meet you back here in a minute. All right, here is my um, rib stitch where I've done two knits, two purls, two knits, two purls, two knits. And on the other side, it's two purls, two knits, two purls, two knits, two purls. Um, this rib stitch is um, a nice pattern for that you might find at the cuff of sweaters or the start of socks and um, right now it looks a little bit loose and so let me just show you what happens when you pull on it. So if I give it a nice little tug like this, now you can't even see the purl stitches. They're kind of sucked in and hiding below and again we get this impression that it looks the same on both sides. Now technically um, there are more purl stitches on this side and there are more knit stitches on this side but when you flip it over it does look the same. So this is a pattern that we often will find with with scarves because you like scarves to be reversible. So uh, garter stitch and rib stitch are two stitches that you'll often find for scarves and then the stockinette stitch or stocking stitch is something that we often use in sweaters. It's just kind of a nice pretty stitch it's very common in knitted fabric and this uh, purl side is often on the inside but not necessarily all the time and the knit stitch is on the outside but again not necessarily all the time. There's one more stitch pattern I want to show you that is a simple alternation of knits and purls um, and that's called the seed stitch. Before I do it I'm going to separate my patterns in my swatch by just knitting two rows um, to put a little border between my rib stitch and my seed stitch. There's one knit row and here's the second knit row. And that's just going to help me not be confused between the rib stitch below and the seed stitch above. And let me get myself a little bit more yarn. Okay. So to do the seed stitch, uh, what we do is we alternate between knits and purls and on um, across the row and on the return row or when you flip it around instead of knitting on top of a knit stitch and purling on top of a purl stitch, you will um, purl on top of a knit stitch and knit on top of a purl stitch. Let's just try this one step at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, knit my first stitch and then I'm going to bring the yarn forward between the needles and purl the second stitch. 
Then take the yarn to the back of your work between the needles and knit the third stitch. Bring the yarn between the needles to the front and purl the fourth stitch. So it's knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. Again, you can see that if you look closely at your stitches underneath your needle, you can see that right underneath the needle I've got every second stitch has a little purl bump. So there's the knit stitch, there's the purl stitch, there's the knit stitch without the bump, there's the purl stitch with the bump. Knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. When I turn it around, you will see just the opposite. Um, the purl stitch was a knit stitch on the other side, and the purl stitch on this side is a knit stitch on this side. Um, doesn't matter, it's just that um, it's important to, to be able to see the purl stitches because you want to knit on top of a purl stitch and purl on top of a knit stitch. Because I can see the knit stitch here quite plainly, that means that I'm going to, because I can see the purl stitch here quite plainly, I'm going to knit on top of this one, which means I have to purl the one in front of it. So that's what I'm going to do for seed stitch, is purl the first stitch, take my yarn to the back, knit the second stitch, Purl the third stitch, knit the fourth stitch, and so on across the row. When I get to the end of the row, I'm going to turn it around and you can start to see the pattern emerging here. We've got um, the bumps are kind of going up and down in a diagonal um, pattern. And if we continue to work this stitch, you'll see that it does look like little diamonds. Okay, so orient yourself by looking at the first stitch or even look further in. Find that telltale purl bump. Know that the that's the stitch then you're going to have to knit because we're doing the opposite on top of the stitch. So if this is a purl, I have to knit on top of it, which means that this one's a purl, which means that this one's a knit. Or you can move your marker up. So I can move it up a little bit higher so that I don't forget about it. And on the side with the marker, I can say to myself, on this side, I'm always going to begin with a knit stitch. And on the side without the marker, I'm always going to begin with a purl stitch, as long as I have an even number of stitches. Okay, let's work a few rows of seed stitch, remembering that uh, you need to take the yarn between the needles and not over the needles. And remembering that when you purl, your yarn needs to be in the front. And when you knit, your yarn needs to be in the back. So here's a seed stitch. Um, and you can now see that the purl stitches uh, pop up to the top and they form these kind of diagonal um, lines or you could look at it as little diamonds that are in in your work. It's a very pretty stitch and um, I like it a lot for um, decorative purposes like the border on something. Um, these stitches, the garter stitch, the rib stitch, and the seed stitch are all reversible so they make great scarf patterns. Here's seed stitch, rib stitch and garter stitch. You could use any one of these to make a really nice scarf. Um, the stockinette stitch, as you can see in the back, just likes to curl up 
And so it's not as good a scarf pattern as these other three are. The upside of doing garter stitch, of course, is that you're just doing one stitch over and over again, and so you don't have to remember to bring your yarn forward. With the rib stitch, you have to remember to bring the yarn forward to purl and take it to the back to knit. And with the seed stitch, you're alternating more frequently, and so it does tend to slow you down a bit. Um, but those are the those are the four kind of basic stitches that you can learn and kind of in order of complexity. Uh, so the next thing that you need to learn is how to bind off. And I'm just going to show you a very simple bind off. And um, it just involves the knit stitch. So phew, you don't have to worry about purling in this one. To bind off, you're going to start by knitting two stitches. So insert your needle, wrap the yarn around, pull that stitch through, take it off the left hand needle. Then you're going to knit a second stitch. Once you have two stitches on your right hand needle, what you need to do to bind off is pass the first stitch that you made, or the one that's farthest away from the tip, over top of the one that's on the, uh, over top of the second one. And here's how you do that. Take the yarn and just hold it uh, on the needle. That will keep this stitch that you just made anchored to the needle. With the tip of your left hand needle, get into the first stitch that you made. And again, holding this one down like this, pass the first stitch over top of the second stitch and off the tip of the right hand needle. Let's do that again. So we have one stitch remaining on the right hand needle and we need two stitches for this maneuver. So go back to your left hand needle and knit one more stitch. Then holding that stitch that you just made in place by holding onto the yarn on the, on the needle, on the right hand needle, Put your left hand needle under the first stitch or the earlier stitch that you made, pass it over top of the second stitch and right off the end of the needle like that. Okay, we've got one stitch on the right hand needle and we need two. So knit a second stitch. I've got my first stitch and my second stitch. I'm going to pass the first stitch over the second stitch by putting my left hand needle into the stitch like this, holding on to that second stitch so it doesn't fall off the needle by holding on to the yarn and passing that first stitch over the second stitch and right off the needle. You can only bind off if you have two stitches on your right hand needle and you always bind off by passing the first stitch over the second stitch. You're going to continue to do this all the way across your work. Have two stitches, pull the first one over the second one. Try not to do this too tightly. So uh, don't pull too hard on your yarn. Pass it over, knit a second stitch, pass the first stitch over the second stitch, pass the first stitch over the second stitch, and now I'm knitting the last stitch, and I'm going to pass the first stitch over the second stitch. When you're down to just one stitch on your needle, put down your empty needle, find your scissors, and cut your yarn, leaving about six inches. You still have one stitch on your needle, and you've now cut your yarn. So using your needle, pull the stitch loose making it bigger and bigger and bigger until that tail comes right through the end. Pop, like that. Now you are done knitting. You've bound off right here. None of your stitches are going to come unraveled or undone after you bind off. Congratulations.